Hello again, fellow Beach Bum Traders. Thank you for watching our weekly trading game plan for the trading week of February 6th through February 10th. This is part one of our weekly trading game plan for this week, where we're trying to communicate, be fearful when others are greedy. This is probably my favorite and probably one of the most famous quotes by Warren Buffett. Be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. And somewhat ironically, about 11 months ago, the title of our weekly trading game plan was the inverse of that quote, which is be greedy when others are fearful. Uh, earlier last year, we had been commenting that we were in and going into a bear market. And so our message to our fellow traders at that time was to be greedy when others are fearful. And we talked about uh, buying when there's blood in the streets. And now our message is be fearful when others are greedy. Uh, so again, you can listen to the inverse uh, from last year, uh, how we traded and what how we were strategizing to be greedy when others are fearful. And now this week, we're going to talk about our trading strategies, about how we can make money trading and how we can be fearful when others are greedy. So this is our Google document with our notes for our weekly trading game plan. Uh, this is a publicly accessible Google document. You should find a link in the description box below where you can access this Google document. It contains links to bonus videos, the tools that we use for our market analysis, and you can refer back to it for our trading strategies, etc. We store all of these uh, Google documents with our weekly trading game plan notes in a publicly accessible uh, Google Drive folder that you can also find a link to in the description box below. So you can refer back to these notes and uh, past uh, notes for our weekly trading game plans. Welcome, Nagam. Good morning. Thank you for joining us in the live chat. Hope you're doing well. So in addition to last year's video about being greedy when others are fearful, we also have a video about understanding the January barometer. And at the end of the video, we'll take a quick look at see what the January barometer says in terms of what we can expect for the markets for this year since we're now in February. So our first full trading week in February, we'll take a look at uh, what that indicates we should expect uh, for this year. So we'll jump in and do our market analysis, et cetera. Stick around and we'll talk about, again, our strategies, trading ideas, et cetera, about how we're going to position to be uh, fearful when others are greedy uh, for this trading week of February 6th through February 10th. So we'll jump into the FinViz. We'll look at how the markets ended up on Friday. Uh, the whole week was kind of interesting, and I'll talk about the reactions that we got to the Fed interest rate decision, what we saw through the week, uh, my opinions as to why we saw uh, the types of market activity that we saw last week. Uh, on Friday, again, we saw early in the day they continued to try to drive the markets up as they did had done on Wednesday and Thursday, and then pretty much right after lunch at around 1 p.m., uh, we had a reversal and the markets ended up all down. So we'll have to see on Monday, uh, are they gonna try to push push back up again or have we uh, have we peaked and now we're on the on, on the down slot, down, downtrend. So we can see we ended up with more decliners and advancers, although we had many more new highs than lows. We have a majority now 80-20 above their 50-day moving average, and we have a 63% above their 200-day moving average. So although uh, this is pretty even, again, it was a, a very different morning versus afternoon. Uh, welcome, Easy Mike. Glad to see you. Thank you for joining us uh, in the live chat again today. Hope you're doing well. So again, we see the heat map. Uh, again, this is showing towards the end of the day, and there was a you know market reversal before lunch versus after lunch. So b before lunch, they were trying to run the fangs, run tech, etc. And uh, towards the end of the day, they all dumped out except for Apple. And again, we'll talk a little bit about earnings and tech and all that as as we get deeper into this. So we see. Some of the news stocks slipped after the January jobs report, although again, 
uh, it, it did not, this happened at, towards the end of the day, right after the jobs report came out on Friday. And again, we'll talk about the economic data that was reported this week and the market's reaction to it. Initially, again, they tried to run the markets back up, even though this jobs report, as we'll see, uh, indicates that the uh, employment, jo the jobs market still very resilient, which means the Fed can continue to be very hawkish. Some signs of market strength, confusing week. And then we saw oil uh, declined. It had run up over 80, and now it's in a steep decline. We uh, Again, we've been talking about some ranges, uh, 70 to 75, 75 to 80. So now it's below 75. We'll see if it's headed back down to 70. Natural gas, again, still been declining. It's, you know, made a couple uh, attempts at running and, and then uh, declined back down. Uh, gold, uh, all the dollar-denominated commodities got hit when the dollar strengthened. So we see the euro is now weaker uh, than it was. It was up at 108, 109. Now it's back down to 107. Again, dollar strength due to the jobs report coming out stronger than expected. Yields popped up. And again, uh, we saw, uh, I'll talk more about the irrational exuberance, in my opinion, that we saw to reactions to the interest rate hikes and the jobs report, et cetera. Uh, but normally, you know, when the yields go up, the stocks go down, and that's not what we initially got. Even though the dollar strengthened, yields went up, the, the markets continue to push until after lunch on Friday. So again, it's a very interesting week. So we'll look at the indices, see where we're at right now. Again, we see this exuberance, you know, pop broke through its its channel, uh, made a run up, and then we've got a shooting star type candle, uh, which is a you know a bearish uh, indicator, bearish candle towards the on Friday. So we'll jump out to the weekly. So we can see it broke out through that. 50 period, 50 week support or uh, moving average. And now that seems to be acting as a support level. We did make a higher low. We did make a slightly higher high. So again, uh, it's it's possible that, you know, we're reversing and headed in a bull market. You're, you're hearing people start to talk about that we might be headed into a bull market. Again, we'll have to see. Look at the Qs, the NASDAQ, very similar. Again, it uh, broke through its 50-week uh, moving average. That's now acting as support. Uh, it's, it, it's made a higher high from that, but it's still got a, a test at a high at 332-ish. Yeah, and the Dow looks like it's much flatter. It's still using that 50 period as a support. Uh, got a doji, an indecision candle at the end of the day. Good morning, Walter Lyons. Thank you for joining us. Glad to see you as well. So IWM showed you yeah, the Russell showed more strength. Again, it's got support on that 50 week moving average. So everybody's broken above their 50 week moving average and they're, they've are they got a good support there. So we'll have to see if the markets continue up or if they retest those 50 week moving, uh, moving averages again. VIX. Volatility, we saw, you know, just some initial, a little bit of volatility, but it stayed below 20 and then started to decline again. Right now, as of this video, the VIX is sitting at 1833. So again, uh, not a whole lot of fear. Uh, people talk about the VIX as a fear uh, indicator, the, the measure of fear, really, it's just volatility. Uh, we did see a little bit of, and this was interesting as well on Friday, is as they were running the markets up, the VIX was also going up. And uh, that's that's an interesting behavior when you when you get the, the VIX headed in, in the going up while the markets are going up. It tells you something's going on under the covers, in my humble opinion. Again, all of this is uh, not financial advice. We're not financial advisors. This is all for my opinion, as is all of our videos. And this is for educational and hopefully some level of entertainment purposes only. 
I also just wanted to kick back to uh, the NASDAQ and look at that on the daily as well. Yeah, this is uh, this is where I see the, uh, in my humble opinion, again, in my humble opinion, this is a rational exuberance. Um, when we got the interest rate hike on uh, Wednesday, that it was pretty much as expected when uh, Powell didn't come out and ask, uh, sound more more hawkish than expected. Um, they've been wanting to run tech for quite some time. And then with the jobs report as well, even despite the jobs report coming out uh, much better than expected, um, they, their desire to run tech has been pretty strong lately. And we saw this gap up and again, in my humble opinion, this is uh, irrational exuberance, and that's why the title for this uh, week's weekly t trading game plan is to be fearful when others are greedy. In my humble opinion, that, that's a sign of uh, extreme greed, and we'll look at the fear and greed index uh, in uh, towards the end of the video, and we'll see if we're still sitting in extreme greed or just uh, very greedy uh, at this point in time. Welcome, Douglas PC. Glad to see you. Thank you also for joining us. So I covered the indexes. I covered the VIX. We'll look at groups and sectors. So again, on Friday, you know, this is the end of the day on Friday. So we saw, you know, eventually everything went negative towards the afternoon earlier in the day. Again, technology, they tried to push technology and, and I think uh, communication was was positive at one point. And then that rolled over. Um, energy made a recovery. I think it was pretty negative um, earlier in the day as well. So again, we saw a major reversal in the middle of the day. For the week, you can see communication services technology, which had been you know poor performers, but they've been trying to push those. Uh, real estate made some a recovery, and the worst performers were basic materials, utilities, and uh, you know energy. So again, profit taking in energy, energy uh, has, has been declining, even though it was a top performer from last year. So we'll have to see if this reverses again early next week or again if they continue to try to push the technology and the underperforming sectors. So again, for the month, for, Jan uh, for February, now technology communication services are top and defensive energy utilities and healthcare are the, the worst performers. Welcome to Ricky Khan. Thank you for joining us. Glad to see you. Yes, quite a week. It was an exciting week, huh? So if we look at the industries, again, we see some oil and gas towards the end of the day, some energy. So again, this is quite a bit of a reversal towards the end of the day. Basic materials were generally negative. Again, copper negative, uh, aluminum. We'll see at the bottom, gold, silver. Um, uranium, again, all towards, so when the dollar strengthened the way it did, um, all your dollar denominated commodities got hit. We'll see if this reverses, if we get some weakening uh, back in the dollar, the, we'll see in the futures what the overall trend was. For the week, it's pretty mixed. Worst performers, again, silver, gold, and energy, basic materials and energy. So again, we'll have to see if we get a sector rotation back into these areas. I think there's a significant opportunity. They really slammed silver on Friday, both silver and gold, but silver in particular. And we'll have to look at the chart. There's a possible rebound uh, opportunity there, in my humble opinion, again. Uh, again, they ran semiconductors with tech, even though we heard, you know, poor guidance, poor outlooks from people like Qualcomm, et cetera. And again, your basic materials are at the bottom. So uh, again, uh, potential opportunity in sector rotation. Keep an eye on that.
Okay, so now we'll talk about the economic data. Again, it was an exciting week in the way the market reacted to this data, even though uh, most of it was pretty much as expected. I'll bring up the calendar in investing.com, and then I'll go through uh, just my notes and comments. Um, there was an OPEC meeting Monday, Tuesday, wasn't very exciting. Then we got into the Fed decision on Wednesday. Uh, there was an OPEC meeting this week, and pretty much uh, from what I understand, they decided not to change anything. So they're on their current production plan. And uh, despite that and some other factors, so uh, I think it was Poland is getting oil from Kazakhstan or something now. Um, but again, oil's been declining. It did try to push up a little bit and then and then tail back off. Mortgage rates initially dropped and then went back up uh, with the job market uh, data later in the week. We saw this ADP non-farm employment was, was less than expected, uh, but I think that was trumped by the jobs report on Friday. ISM manufacturing was, was okay, a little better than expected. Job openings, you heard Powell even mention this, is that there's still, it's almost two to one job openings per uh, employee looking. So again, this was something he actually commented on that the job market shows it's still resilient, plenty of job openings still out there. Again, uh, crude oil inventories, it was a build much larger than expected. And even despite that, uh, the crude oil, oil prices went up at that time. Again, I've been saying for several weeks that um, I, I think the market reaction to is, isn't paying attention to these numbers and is trading technically. Um, and therefore, the, the data, whether it's a positive, negative, we'll see the same thing with natural gas, um, is not driving the price. I think it's pure technicals at this point. Uh, also, refinery utilization was down. So again, uh, with the, a big build like that, uh, we would have expected the uh, supply increase and uh, pr the price to drop, and at the time it went up. So, okay, so here's uh, what I gleaned from. Um, so uh, obviously, you probably already know the Fed inc increased their interest rates by 25 basis points, 0.25%. Uh, so now the Fed uh, funds rate is 4.75. So, um, some of the comments I gleaned from some of the news and from Powell's comments, they say inflation's eased but remains somewhat elevated. Ongoing rate increases will be appropriate. So again, we should expect more increases. They might be only 25 basis points. That would probably be uh, probable. Um, this was pretty much as expected. Uh, they'll continue reducing their balance sheet as planned, so quantitative tightening as planned. They have more work to do, so they're going to keep in increasing interest rates. Ongoing rate increases will be appropriate. They're significantly reducing their balance sheet, so quantitative tightening. Uh, the labor market remains extremely tight. Labor market continues to be out of balance. Inflation remains well above their 2% goal, and you heard they're sticking to their 2% goal. So there's no indication they're moving off at 2%. We've got a long way to go between where we're at, 6 7% inflation, and their 2% goal. So again, they've got to continue hiking rates to bring inflation down. And we'll stay the course until the job is done. So until they hit their 2% inflation goal, they're going to keep raising rates not at sufficiently restrictive policy stance. So again, all these indicate uh, continuing uh, interest rate hikes. There's nothing to indicate any kind of pivot. I mean, we've been saying this for a long time. The market's trying to, trying to play that there's gonna be some kind of pivot. Um, and the Fed is saying, you know, that, that ain't happening. Um, and we've, we've been talking about this battle between the market and the Fed now for uh, probably a month or so. And, you know, they always say, don't fight the Fed, <laughs> but they also say, don't fight the tape. And right now the, the tape was uh, up running, you know, this uh, exuberance Wednesday, Thursday and, and the first half of Friday. Uh, it was definitely momentum was up. And uh, we'll see if that has now changed as of, you know, after lunch on Friday. So the Thursday, we got some job cuts. Uh, it was not significant. Uh, didn't get a lot of reaction from that. And then we got jobless claims. 
was less than expected. Initial claims is less than expected. Uh, the average is less than expected. The unit labor cost was a little down. So again, these are all positive uh, for you know the job market, but uh, negative in terms of uh, the um, Fed continuing to hike rates. Again, we saw a major decline in natural gas storage, and then the price tried to run up, and then it eventually rolled over and came back down. So again, uh, the price action is, is significantly divorced from, from the data. So I, I would go with the price action uh, and the trend, the sentiment, sentiment on natural gas is, is obviously down right now. Uh, we'll see if it may have achieved a bottom at this point. Then Friday, again, we got all this job data. Hourly earnings is up, hours is up, payrolls are up, and this non-farm payroll number was, you know, drastically higher than expected. Normally, what we would have expected the market to dump on on a significantly um, different than expected number like that. And again, they continued to try to uh, run the market up at least till noon, and then it. Uh, appeared to have rolled over. So again, all this data says the job market's very resilient. Uh, as you'll see in a second, the news is that the unemployment rate, which is now 3.4%, is the lowest since 1969. Uh, so again, all that says the job market's very resilient. The Fed can continue to hike rates without fear of uh, their other major mandate, which is employment. So again, in my humble opinion, the reaction that we saw was an irrational, exuberant reaction. And again, that's why we're saying be fearful when others are being greedy. Uh, so I'll quickly flip through the calendar in investing.com, see if we missed anything. Let me see if I can zoom this in a little bit. So employment data, wages, uh, 1%. Construction spending was down a little bit. ISM was was okay. Job cuts again. We've got some job cuts, but I think there's a again a divergence between where they're cutting jobs, where they're laying off, and and services areas. Uh, um, leisure and hospitality, I know, is still tr hiring. So, uh, you know, overall the job market is is still growing. Unemployment's still low. So let's see what we've got uh, coming up for the next week. I don't think there's a whole lot. That's It's pretty typical. So we've got trade balance data, mortgage data. Got typical oil, natural gas. Thursday, we've got typical jobless, job, jobless claims data. Again, very typical. So we'll see if that diverges at all. And then we've got sentiment data. Again, uh, nothing major, pretty, pretty average in terms of our economic data calendar for next week. The next FOMC meeting uh, is not until uh, late in March. So again, we've got six weeks now between the next meeting. So you'll start to see the Fed presidents coming out talking and, you know, the market will dissect everything they say to try to guess. Uh, what they're going to do in the next meeting. Are they going to wait, pause, are they gonna go 25 points, 50 points, whatever. Um, again, uh, I, you know, the market will move up and down depending on who says what. Uh, again, we're still in the depths of the earnings season. And again, you can reference our previous video on how to make money trading when earnings matter again. And again, uh, earnings should matter. Although again, here's another piece of evidence of, of why I think we saw an irrational exuberant reaction to even earnings. As you heard, Apple came out and they disappointed on their sales. They've got issues. Uh, Amazon missed. Uh, they're unprofitable. Again, we talked about this. We predicted this, you know, last week. Google disappointed. Again, all the cloud providers. Uh, we heard this uh, provided by Microsoft previously. And again, they're they're all showing a slowdown 
Um, and despite that, uh, uh, even up till uh, Friday morning, uh, they were running, you know, Google, Amazon. Um, we know Meta did a huge uh, buyback, huge stock buyback, and they're trying to be more fiscally responsible. And that was received very positively. And again, we'll talk about some of that as well. Uh, but again, you can see the detailed earnings calendar and investing.com. Uh, again, I would highly recommend you take a look, see if there's somebody that you're looking to buy in the same industry as something you're buying, owning, et cetera, and uh, then listen to those earnings to hear um, what the reaction may may be to that and sympathy plays, et cetera. Some of these will pre present opportunities, uh, you know, with sympathy plays, positive, negative, so it's, it's worth listening. Also, don't just listen to the headline numbers. Sometimes the algorithms uh, react initially to the headline number, whether they had an EPS beat or miss, whether revenue beat or miss. Uh, but then when they come out and they give their guidance and that, that reverses because they may have positive earnings from fourth quarter last year, uh, but their guidance may be very negative going forward. And again, that's what hit the big fang companies um, significantly. So. Again, you can dig through this. Again, you can see we're really in the depths of earnings season, so there's just tons of, of earnings. So, Also, just a reminder, we've added an earnings reports channel in our Discord. Our Discord is free to join. This uh, earnings, calendar, or earnings reports channel is getting a Twitter feed from EPS GUID Earnings News. So as earnings come out, if you're uh, if you've joined our free Discord, uh, you'll see these earnings reports come out in this channel. So, and it's you know with with the heavy earnings calendar, we can get a lot of news coming pretty quickly. So if you want to mute that and and go back to it, you can. So we hope that helps. Also, just a reminder, uh, the Surf the Markets channel here in our Discord. Uh, we get news from Market Watch Economy, also an automated feed from them that will give an, a good interpretation of the news. And then I also try to snapshot um, out of investing.com as the earnings, uh, as the economic data is, is reported as quickly as I can get that out. And I'll post that in the Surf the Markets channel in our Discord. Again, our Discord's free to join. You can find a invite in the description box below, and I'll also put the pointer up in the um, banner as well. So again, come join us. Uh, you can get the news very quickly this way. Okay, so now we'll look at the market screen and Weeble. And let me grab a drink a sec. Uh, just a quick reminder, Weeble is still offering their 12 free stocks. So if you're not already using Weeble, you can get 12 free stocks anywhere from three to $3,000. You get two by uh, just opening an account, an additional 10 by depositing um, $100. So again, uh, the other nice thing we like about Weeble, you'll see we use it for our market analysis, our due diligence, and the majority of our trading. And we like the 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. trading hours as that offers some unique opportunities, particularly with uh, ETF rebalancing that we like to take advantage of. So let me grab a drink and then we'll jump over to Weeble. Okay, so if we look at the histogram of how the markets ended up on Friday, again, they ended up in decline. So we did end up with more decliners than advancers. But again, this was a market reversal around, you know, after lunch. So again, it's pretty split on both sides. Uh, the inflows and outflows, again, the past couple weeks we've seen the NASDAQ was outperforming the NYSC, and now we see a reversal in that. So maybe we have seen a reversal in that uh, irrational exuberance in the NASDAQ in tech. So 
and come back tomorrow for part two. We'll talk about some of our uh, specific stocks, ETFs, etc., of how we're uh, playing the theme of, of being fearful when others are greedy, particularly in the NASDAQ. So again, I uh, mentioned that there's another earnings calendar in Weeble, so you can go to the calendar tab, hit earnings, and you can see what's coming up in the very near term. So this is very helpful. It'll say before market open, after market close, and you can keep track of what's coming up uh, in the very near term also in Weeble. Let's look at the industries. Let's look at them for the week. Uh, Again, we kind of know everything was pretty red for uh, end of Friday. So hardware, software ended up positive. Again, the run in tech. Retail actually made a recovery. Carvana, which they're, they're in deep uh, financial trouble. So again, things like that tell you, you know, irrational exuberance. Electronics, okay. Household goods. Semiconductors, again, they, they ran semiconductors with tech. And I think, again, I'll talk about an opportunity I think we, we have in that area. Natural gas, uh, utilities. Real estate, some recovery. Peloton, again indications you know these these companies that are way overvalued losing money in financial trouble if they're up significantly that's that should be a warning sign that was a comment i know easy mike threw out in one of the benzinga chats was you know when the meme stocks are are uh, exuberant irrational exuberance and meme stocks watch out Right, easy, Mike. So look at the ETFs. So down on the Dow. So again, towards the end of down on the NASDAQ, down on the S&P. So right now, everybody's pointing down as of end of Friday. Short. That's the short on Bitcoin, so pointing down on Bitcoin, pointing up on volatility. Down, that's a short on the Russell. Both those guys are shorts on the Russell. We will talk about these. I've got both of those on our watch list, and we'll talk about those tomorrow. We'll look at those in more detail. So Walter, Walter says a bit bad omens. So again, uh, all the industries pretty red has even energy. So let's see if there's any green as of end of Friday consumer defensive. Okay, so there's a sick, uh, sector rotation back into what, you know, one would expect in a recessionary high inflation, high interest rate would be more defensives. Uh, financial services should uh, perform well. well. We'll talk about our strategy with financials. We've seen these carbon offsets have been doing well. Grain, we'll see in the futures in a minute. Uh, some of the wild moves in some of the commodities. Uh, carbon, again, grains. Let's look at the bonds. So seven to tens are positive. Asia, three to sevens. And all the currencies are negative. Again, dollar strength. So that, that's hitting all the foreign currencies. So we'll look at the futures in Finviz. So again, here we can see, you know, this is, in my humble opinion, you know, irrational exuberance, uh, the Fed's interest rate, you know, there was nothing unexpected. I mean, we were expecting 25 basis points. That's what we got. Markets, so there's been so much money. Again, this is all my opinion as to 
why we saw the reaction we did is, again, I think, and I've talked about this in the past, I think there's just been so much money sitting on the sidelines wanting to get in. They want the markets to go up. And given that there was nothing negative to keep it from going up, uh, they rushed in and, and drove the markets up. Um, and again, even though the jobs data was was uh, tells us the job market's strong, Fed's going to keep hiking. Uh, they still continue to run them up until late Friday. Now we're seeing, you know, possibly a top and a reversal. So again, uh, we saw this extreme greed, and now we should be fearful. So we may see a major reversal. Same thing with the Russell. I mean, look at that steep uh, climb in the Russell. Again, when I see overextended and gap up like that, that's that's the time I'm looking at a reversal going the other way. VIX, again, bottom bounced up. So, you know, are we going to see increased volatility? It's very possible. We see that dump in oil. So oil looks like it peaked just over 80. It was about 82. Looks like it's rolling over. It's down below 75. Uh, are we going to get down back down to 70. We know um, the Biden administration says they're going to refill the SPR somewhere between 70 and 75. So there's a floor there. If we get down to 70, that's going to present some very nice opportunities uh, in oil. You know, and we'll talk about this possibly again tomorrow. I'd love to get back in a large chunk in USOI. Very nice monthly dividend paying ETN. So I'd love to get a chunk, a large chunk of that back if we do drop down to 70. See this decline in natural gas. It's not clear if it's got a real stable bottom. So we could see a, a further decline in natural gas. Again, the sentiment's very negative. With the, They're saying warm weather, et cetera. Uh, we've got that um, Freeport coming back online slowly. And we saw the dump in gold and silver. Again, the dollar strength, they reacted very, you know, very violently and dumps gold and silver. I think, you know, there's potential opportunities. They're still pretty high. But if you're short term trading, I think there's some uh, opportunities for a rebound in those areas. Uh, Copper is kind of pretty rolled over. Again, we see some of the other commodities, you know, ran up. Something crazy with orange juice. Maybe Douglas PC knows what's going on with orange juice. It made a, a crazy run too. Coffee ran way up. Lumber ran back up. Now, see, these are you know potentially inflationary, right? If lumber uh, that could drive cost of houses back up, even though the housing market's pretty uh, in a recession. And we saw all the bonds dump. So again, yields went up. Prices came down. Again, with the dollar strength. And again, normally when the bond yields jump up, the markets go down. And initially, they just didn't react that way. So we, we had a lot of uh, irrational behavior in the markets uh, versus how they normally react relative to things like bonds and the dollar, et cetera, and the economic data. So So Douglas says the grove's been shut down. So, oh, and winter's okay. So there may be a die off in the grove. So orange groves are here in Florida. Maybe that's why the, um, the orange juice prices shot up. So again, I think there's, you know, in the, when we get these irrational behaviors that, in my humble opinion, that uh, presents potential opportunities. So uh, we'll have opportunities, maybe short term, longer term. Um, again, if you were playing momentum, there was uh, breakouts, momentum. There were a good couple days there. Hopefully you made some money there. Uh, if we reverse and come back the other way, we might have some good opportunities, momentum. Uh, trade the other way and then swinging back the other way. And again, we'll talk about that in more detail, individual stocks, ETFs that we're looking at to uh, play that and to be uh, fearful as others have been greedy. Um, so again, let's we'll look at the fear and greed index. So I've got a link to the fear and greed index along with many other tools and resources on our homepage, beachbumptrading.com. I'll throw that up in the banner as well. Uh, and you can find a link also in the description box below.
And under the link section, again, you can find an invite to our Discord, all if you want to contact us via social media as well, the trading platforms we use, trading tools, and then a number of other resources, etc. So here we've got the Fear and Greed Index. We've also talked recently about the Fed Rate Monitoring Tool, etc. So a lot of resources here for your quick reference. Let's see if we can get the Fear and Greed Index to come up. And we're at extreme greed. I kind of thought we would, but maybe with the, the dump on uh, late on Friday, maybe it would uh, come back down a little bit. But you see, we're at 76. We're at extreme greed. So, uh, again, be fearful when others are greedy. and We're at extreme greed. So, so maybe we should be extremely fearful, right? So you can see some of the, some of the details of this. The momentum is greed. The price strength's extreme greed. The price breadth's extreme greed. Pull and call options, extreme greed. So that says many more calls than puts. So there aren't a lot of people betting down right now. Volatility, again, the mix is very low. So uh, it's 1830. Safe haven demand. So again, might get a rotation back into consumer defensives. And back into bonds potentially. So, again, if you go to this site, you can get more details on what exactly to these mean. Um, I think I did a video or we did this in a previous weekly trading game plan. We dug into this as well. But again, we can see right now we're sitting at extreme greed and therefore we should be extremely fearful at this point. Um, let me hit this. Since this is our first week in February, I wanted to take a quick look at how February tends to perform relative to other months. So you see here's February, and typically we've talked about the January effect tends to be positive, and we have the video explain the January effect. We'll also look at the January barometer briefly, but you see typically uh, February tends to be positive, but very, very small positive. So we, we really can't expect the uh, the run like we had in this January. I think this January, the average was like 5 6% up. So we had a very good January effect, very positive. Um, and again, in a second, we'll talk about what that indicates in terms of the January barometer relative to the year. Uh, but again, February tends to be positive, but, you know, much less. And then we get a pickup March, April, and then drop off uh, May, June. That's your sell in May and go away theme. And we'll, we'll talk about that as we get farther into the year. Again, you can find a link to this in our notes. Look at how the various months perform historically. Uh, Here's our video on the January barometer, so you can listen to that and hear, you know, what's the basis for this historically? What, what does that indicate uh, based on the performance of January? And then let's see how we ended up on January. So I need to get to the performance tab. And then I'll zoom back in. Let's see. Okay. So for the month, we were up 3% in the Dow, almost 9% S&P, and 16.5% on the NASDAQ, 13 on the, the Russell small caps. So year to date, uh, 2%, 8%, 15%, 13%. So the January barometer says, you know, as per January, well, we had a very strong January effect. And as you'll hear in that video on the January barometer, that says that we can expect that the year will be very positive. So again, bodes very well for the year. Possibly we'll get back into our our bull market for the year. But again, the January barometer says, based on the performance of January, we should expect this year to be up. So welcome, John. Thank you for joining us. Good to see you. So again, that's what the January barometer says for the year, we should expect the markets in general to be up. So a couple other strategies, trade ideas I want to talk about briefly. Uh, let me grab a drink a second and uh, I'll 
talk about these in some detail. So last week we talked about um, the fact that as these, particularly the, the tech firms are announcing lot layoffs, that that's uh, been being received positively and their stock price goes up, at least in the short term. And we, we're we hearing all the majors, you know, Amazon, Google, Facebook, um, all announcing layoffs and their stock price goes up. The other thing that was interesting with Meta is they announced a big uh, stock buyback and that uh very positively received for their stock price. I think it went up 20%. Um, I was a little surprised that some of the other big tech companies didn't also come out with a big stock buyback. I believe Apple still has a big st uh, stock buyback that they can leverage. Um, and even though there's now, as of this year, an additional 1% tax on stock buybacks, uh, the market receives that very positively. So they're laying off people and they're buying back stock. Um, because, uh, you know, makes their stock price go up. So um, I would not be surprised. I should have put that bullet point in here as well to hear other companies uh, follow that playbook, announce layoffs, get a stock buyback, and that'll make your stock price go up. And then they can, you know, they can sell. Um, your insiders could sell when the stock price goes up. Also, I wanted to point out that as we're hearing about these layoffs, that some of these companies that charge for software on a per seat or subscription basis, they're actually losing revenue when their customers are laying off. So as you hear these layoffs, think about, okay, what, what do they normally spend money on when they hire people? Um, and they're not going to be spending money on that. And actually, they're going to be saving money when they lay people off. So Microsoft, uh, Office 365, Amazon, Google, uh, Adobe, a lot of these things, particularly here. so when you hear defense contractors, engineering firms, etc., cetera, uh, laying off people, they typically buy these engineering, and they're pretty expensive, some of them, uh, engineering software. And nowadays, they're all on a subscription basis. So if they're laying off a lot of people, they're not buying CAD software. They're not buying Office 365, you know. So uh, those companies are going to lose revenue as their customers lay off. Also, as companies stop hiring or they reduce hiring, typically when you hire a new employee, you got to buy them a new computer, you got to buy them peripherals, you got to buy them new, you know, installed software, et cetera. Well, they're going to sell less as people quit hiring. So anybody that normally sells, uh, based on hiring, as you hear this slow down, think about, you know, Logitech, I guess, had poor, poor earnings, their peripherals, um, uh, the PC companies, you know, they sell hardware, they're all, they're not going to sell as much. So as you hear these layoffs, you know, it benefits the company announcing the layoff initially, um, but it's going to hurt companies that uh, they are a customer for. So things to think about. Uh, but last week, I talked about the hype in chat, GPT and AI, and we certainly saw that. I know C3AI announced that they're going to do something with AI, even though they're losing money and their price, their stock price ran way up. Uh, be careful. Again, uh, is, is this at peak hype? Uh, I don't know, um, but it's definitely very being very hyped. Anything now, everybody's coming out and they want to throw AI in their name, like everybody wanted to throw um, EV or uh, crypto in their name last year. And you can uh, get more information about the hype cycle. What does that mean? What are my opinions as to how to trade the hype cycle in this video about how to make money using the hype cycle? It's the Gartner hype cycle. And also about the technology adoption life cycle and how that, um, you know, where you hit a chasm, et cetera, where these things, uh, maybe we're seeing all the early adopters and maybe we're going to hit a wall, hit the chasm, and it's going to stop there. Um, also, I started a, the series on uh, 
series of videos on chat gpt what is chat gpt uh, we're going to come out with more about how to use it how do you access it and then examples of how i'm using it how you can make money using chat gpt in our virtual consulting 101 channel uh, so again if you want to learn more if you don't know what we're talking about in terms of chat gpt etc um, you can see those videos on our virtual consulting 101 channel you think eggs are a hype thing? <laughs> yeah, they're very expensive. I know they're talking about people are now uh, building um, chicken coops and, and, you know, so they can produce their own eggs. So, And I'm, we're continuing to rethink and evolve our options trading strategies. I have a couple questions out in our Discord. Again, our Discord's free to join. We hope you will join our Discord, join in the discussions. We've got a great group of traders helping each other out, helping each other succeed in their trading, sharing lessons learned, sharing ideas, et cetera, in our free Discord. Uh, and again, we're discussing options and how can we evolve our options trading strategies uh, to take advantage of the various types of markets. So, you know, how often do you see early adoption? How do you determine the best stocks to sell puts on? Uh, those are our primary strategies. We also sell covered calls. Um, so again, share in the discussion, join our Beach Bum Trading uh, Discord, our community. Um, we also have a Facebook group if you'd like to join and discuss in there. Uh, whichever you'd prefer would be fine. And tomorrow uh, we will review in more detail um, particular stocks that we're looking at selling puts on in our new uh, puts for return on invested capital Google Sheet. So again, in part two of our weekly trading game plan, we'll select our individual stocks, ETFs, et cetera, that we're gonna put on our watch list for next week. And also uh, ones that we're looking at selling puts on uh, next week, we'll talk about tomorrow. Again, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern time on uh, every Sunday, pretty much we do our part two where we take all this market analysis, all these strategies and trade ideas and select our individual stocks, ETFs and uh, again, strategies, trade ideas we're going to use for uh, trading next week, uh, which is February 6th through February 10th again. So if anyone has any last minute questions in the chat, I can entertain uh some last minute questions. Otherwise we'll wrap up and, and reconvene tomorrow. And again, we'll, we'll talk about part two. We'll use all this data we've gathered. We'll talk about how we're applying the strategy to be fearful when others are greedy and selecting our individual stocks, ETFs, et cetera, uh, what we're looking at selling puts on, uh, again, tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern um, for part two. So thank you to everyone that joined us in the live chat today. Thank you for everyone that watched this video after the fact. We certainly appreciate you. Uh, we hope you like this uh, content. Smash the like button. If you're not already subscribed, we hope you will choose to subscribe to our Beach Bump Trading uh, YouTube channel. And uh, let us know what you think in the comments below in our free Discord and our Facebook group, etc. So, and or contact us via our social media sites. Again, you can find links to all these on our homepage, beachbumtrading.com, bum without the U, and all the different ways you can contact us. So we hope this all helps, and we hope you have a great trading week for February 6th through February 10th. We'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks.